Hi. All right. So hi. Uh, glad you're here. Thank you. So Thank you uh, so how has your time been here at GDC so far? It's been good. Yeah. I uh, I I have slept a little bit, which is always good. Um, I <laughs> took I, I went straight from the plane into a. I'm one of the um, IGDA Next Gen leaders this year, and I went straight into a workshop from like 18 hours of flying. And so I just hit the ground running, I think, and just stick, stick that way, yeah. So you're still dealing with a little bit of uh, jet lag as well? No, it's all self-inflicted now. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. It's all self-inflicted. You just jumped yeah. right into it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. Absolutely, yeah. So, so yeah, uh, Australia, kind of a far away place from here. It is. So can you tell us a little bit about the game industry in Australia? Okay, so do you remember the GFC when that happened? Yeah, more. Wah, wah. Uh, that kind of killed AAA in Australia. Uh, we don't really have any left anymore. We're all a bunch of little indies, all working sort of separately but together. Um, and because of that, it's actually been really good. I know that that's bad to say. People losing their jobs is not good. That's bad. But um, good the, way. Yeah, the way that we've sort of come out of it working together a little bit more is actually kind of a blessing. Um, we have a lot of co-working spaces now where everyone kind of hangs out together. And it used to be really as it probably is here, you know, if someone from the press or someone from another studio is coming into your studio, everyone's like, <gasps> mm -hmm. cards this? close to the chest, cover that up, don't let them see this, don't let them see that. And now everyone's just walking around going, do you want to borrow this UDK? Or do you want to, like, do you want to, do, can I help you with that port? Like, and it's like, yeah, sure, you know stuff. So it's, it's got this really nice. collaborative feeling about it. It's nice. That's excellent. Yeah. Okay, so like, uh, so tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do. So I'm a writer and narrative designer. Um, I teach interactive storytelling at RMIT University and the Victorian College of the Arts in Melbourne, in Australia. Um, it's super fun because one of those degrees is game dev students and the other is screenwriting students. So I get this really interesting perspective from, um, I won't say kids, it's really condescending, but like practitioners who are, you know, getting into VR, getting interested in what they can do in a, in a screenwriting capacity when they introduce agency and choice. So that's really, really fun to see. They make the weirdest stuff that, like, I never, <laughs> ever would have expected. Um, and my game design degree, the subject that I teach in that, it's an elective to the whole School of Media and Comms and the School of Design. So I get journalists, fine artists, photographers, all of them all trying their first Twine game as well. So it's, um, it's a really interesting bunch of people. I like teaching people who aren't game developers mm. <laughs> because yeah. they just bring the weirdest stuff. And I go, that's amazing. You're a genius. And they're like, oh, it just made sense to me. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <Yeah. laughs> so it's fun. So uh, let's talk about, let's get down into like what, with uh, the LGBTQIA spectrum. Yep. So uh, where do you fall on that spectrum? I'm the B and the Q. I like to identify as queer more than bisexual because I feel... While I don't think bisexual means a binary, a lot of people do. Um, and so I go with queer to be like, I like aerothying. Um, <laughs> and I'm poly, so I'm greedy as well. Um, <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I'm a big Q and a little B. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, that's a unique perspective because bi erasure mm. occurs. Absolutely. To where it's like you're not gay enough. Yeah. And then the straight people are like, oh, well, you're, you're not one of us either. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, actually, this week, um, I met someone at a party on, like, I don't even know what day it is today, so I don't know what day it was then. <laughs> it's but Wednesday. It, Wednesday, great. Okay, so this would have been Monday, I don't know, uh, where um, they asked me what parties I was going to this week, and I got out, you know, my scroll, um, and <laughs> I went, well, I'm, going, I'm speaking at the LGBTQ party, and they were like, but you're not gay. I was like, uh, I kind of am. Like, but you've got blonde hair. <laughs> and I was like, yes, I do. <laughs> so I, that's new to me. Whoa. I didn't know that blondes weren't so, allowed to be yeah, gay. Yeah, apparently not. Yeah, they're like, you don't have blue hair or piercings or like, you know. I'm like, <laughs> so I almost feel like it's kind of more radical in the games industry to look like a mum than it is to like <laughs> look, you know, traditionally queer. Whatever that is. Um, so yeah, I am I am queer despite not having you know all this going on. I'm a lazy queer. I don't have time for that shit. <laughs> like I'm lazy. Come yeah. as you come as you are, as and you, you are, are welcome. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like I, I feel sort of not queer enough for a lot of queer spaces, and then too queer for the straight spaces. 
So I kind of balance the two. But I'm kind of used to that, I guess. So yeah. how does that play into uh, your work? Uh, like, for, like, for instance, in the workplace for you and in gaming, yeah. have you ever had to, had to be an advocate and had to speak out and then they're like, you were a sleeper the whole time. <laughs> yeah, we well, never even I'm knew. A I'm a spy. I'm a double agent. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, there is a privilege that comes with being sort of straight passing, especially in work contexts. Um, where I can I can go in and advocate for someone and they're like oh what a nice straight lady that is sticking up for the you know the butch girl and it's like yeah we made out before but sure yeah <laughs> um, <laughs> you know so it can be it can be uh, helpful to the community and to uh, you know my my siblings um, to to not let everyone know I'm gay necessarily or, or that I'm queer. Um, but then when I drop it, it's like a bomb and it's a bit of fun too. So everyone's kind of like, oh, oh, I can speak to you now. Oh, great. Oh, cool, cool. Like I'm a safe person for people to go to. So I like straddling management and then like everyone else and being able to sometimes act as an intermediary between those two things mm. and to make sure that everyone's sort of being listened to and heard as much as I can. I think that's kind of the responsibility that comes with being in that position. So what about in your experience? Because uh, we were talking with Gordon about kind of coming out at work. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it's like, how gay can I show, how much gayness can I show you? How much, yep. how saturated do I turn up my rainbow here? <laughs> and so it's like, do you feel like you have to have, you know, do you have an ex experience with that as well? Um, somewhat. I used to be really like edgy about it and used to keep it really close and only told people that I was gonna have sex with. Basically, I was like, that's fair, yeah, that's the only person who needs to know. Uh, but uh, now I see that it's actually important for me to, to be out and proud as much as I can. Um, there are certain people that I don't feel safe, being really soups gay, as Gordon said, around. Um, but that's their shit, not mine. Like, I don't take it on. I don't think there's anything wrong with me. There's lots of things wrong with me, but it's not that. <laughs> Um, like that stuff's good but like I just I don't take it as personally as I used to I used to be really upset when someone was all like oh she's you know not quite right um, I, now I just go ha, and you're a bigot okay bye like I just sort of <laughs> I don't really care as much and look there's a privilege that comes with that too I've, I've been around for a long time I've been doing this job for a long time and I am in a position where I can be like you know, and that's not something that everyone gets, you know. I've got secure housing, I've got a good job, not everyone has that, you know. Yep. So yep. I'm lucky that I can sort of push back a little bit more than I could, yeah. So let's talk about uh, gaming and uh, mm -hmm. narrative. Yeah. And let's talk about um, uh, representation mm -hmm. in gaming and in narratives. Is there any? Is there anything that you would like? Like, is there anything that you would uphold and say, "Yeah, they got it right," or "Oh, they almost got it right," or just? Uh... I wish it was easier to hold up. I got it right, but it's really difficult. <laughs> like, I can't think of anything that I immediately go, "Yay, that was excellent." Because, um, like, for me, for instance, um, Dragon Age Inquisition had yep. Krem, a yep. uh, trans character, and I was like, yes. Yep. Uh, and I was like, this is great. I can see myself in this character. Um, and, and then uh, in Dragon Age, or sorry, no, uh, Mass Effect. So Bioware has just been yep. really good about this. Uh, yeah, I, it's been fantastic. <laughs> and, and having... It's been interesting that your gay characters aren't always, oh, I'm open to anybody, male shepherd, femme shepherd. Yeah, yeah. Because even like uh, Tali was like, yeah, I'm into dudes. And yeah. I had femme shep. And like, it was nice to have those types of boundaries. Yeah. And that, and that narrative that it's like, you can be this identity and not just be the one that's open to anybody. And that's our token gay. Yeah. Uh, so like, do you have any thoughts around that, about, around those types of narratives? And Bisexual characters are often the deceivers, the sneaks, the spies, the, you know, whoa, she likes both, what? Like, like it's kind yep. of a, you know, and I, I'm a bit overseeing that. I'm like, can, can someone just like be like, I like sex with lots of different people. Woo. Like it's not that big a deal, right? Mm -hmm. But apparently it is. Um, uh, and I would like to see less, less of that whole sneakiness attached with it. Like a lot of trans representation in, in wider media, not just games, is like trap or like, you know, surprise kind yeah. of, like it's really bad. It's yeah. really, really it, that kills people. Mm -hmm. That absolutely kills it people. It literally kills it people. It literally kills people and that's really bad and we should never ever engage in that. So the buy thing's not that bad, <laughs> but um, you know it's still something that games 
I haven't really, if you've written it, please let me know. If you've written a really good bi character that's just bi and there's nothing else really going on, <laughs> like this, they're, not, they're not an evil mastermind or a spy or a double agent, then um, you know, that'd be awesome, even though I just described myself as that, but that was different. <laughs> That's, um, that's for you. Yeah, that's mine. That's, that's my for choice. You. You, know, you know you and you can speak on yourself yeah. because, well, pff, you are the expert in you. I am the expert on me. So what about your, what's your favorite game? Like, oh your favorite God. game of all time. You're stuck on an island. Oh, I hate this. Okay. You're stuck on an island. You get one game. What game is that? Oh, you're going to judge me so bad because he's Am like, I? Yes. Okay, tell me. Because he's garbage. Oh, okay. Well. Minecraft. Um. <laughs> that's not garbage. I know, I know. But, like, he's kind of half ruined it for me because he's turned out to be really nasty on Twitter. He called me a cunt on Twitter. So it's like, you made my favorite game and you're calling me a cunt because I'm a feminist. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, so it's a bit like, but it's still my happy place. I still go in there and I still stack stuff. And ha I do all these like, well, this is getting deep now, but I do all these meditations for therapy, right? And I do them with Minecraft at the same time. So I like place a block, do the exercise, place a block, do the exercise. And by the time I've got a wall, it's like, Big deal. Like a lot of stuff's going on once that wall's finished. So what's your, so, favorite, what's your favorite thing to do in Minecraft? Build walls. Um, <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, yeah, I just, I, I like to, each time I go in, I never go back to the same world again. Like I'm in that world for that one playthrough and that's it and then I'm out, um, which is different. I, had, I didn't used to play like that until I, I wrote a book about misogyny in the games industry and after that I couldn't really play games for a while. I really struggled. I was like, why do I, this is awful. <laughs> All of this is bad and everyone wants to kill me and I hate it and I can't play it and it's ruined the fun. But um, Minecraft has got me slowly back into it again. Um, and the Switch, the Switch has helped. I've got to say that. Um, yeah. Although Zelda, I'm still not 100% into yet. I've tried, I've sunk hours and hours into that thing. I'm like, when does it get good? Sorry. <laughs> Ooh, controversial. Oh, man. But yeah, I, uh, I've been playing a lot of that because it's, you know, easy to pick up and put down. But um, Minecraft, I normally just get into a world, survive, make a little village, leave, <laughs> and then never go back. And then never delete go it. back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, so what was your first game that you remember playing? Oh, uh, Mario, the first one. The, uh, on the for the NES? Yeah. For the, super, uh, for the regular Nintendo. Back yeah, the yeah. Day. Well, I was born in 1985, so was Mario. He, was, he came around in 1985. And I'm an only child, so <laughs> mum gave us a Nintendo early on and um, was like, here, don't annoy me, annoy this. Like, <laughs> you know? So uh, I've been, yeah, I've been playing Mario since, like, I was about five, something like that. We got it late because we were in Australia. So, <laughs> so, so you <laughs> it took kinda, a while to get down there. So you kind of grew up with games in yeah. your life. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And so what kind of put you on the path of wanting to go into games? Um, I started out, I've always played them, always loved them, always talked about them with friends. And then I started wanting to be a journalist at one point. Uh, and yeah, <laughs> that was, I'm not good at that. But, um, uh, and then I, so I was interviewing a whole bunch of people who were making games and I was like, man, you get to do the coolest stuff and I have to write about people doing cool stuff. I'd much rather be doing the cool stuff, like, you know. So I uh, reached out to my community in Australia and said, um, in Melbourne, and said, you know, is there anyone who's got any jobs going for someone with my kind of skill set? Like, I can arrange words in some kind of way uh, <laughs> that might benefit you. Um, <laughs> and uh, I got, like, an editing job with Tin Man Games who do game books, like the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Um, and so I edited one of those, and then after that I was just like... Like my oh. whole brain just exploded and I loved it. And I had a go at writing one and it exploded again in the best way. And, um, and then I was hooked. And then I was, yeah, and then I just started working on, you know when you're new and you cast out the net when you're doing contracting work and then the net comes back full of stuff and you're like, oh no. <laughs> and then you spend, you know, the next couple of years getting rid of all those jobs and then all of a sudden you cast out the net again and then, yeah. So it's been kind of a cycle with me in game dev of taking on too much, finishing it, breathing, freaking out that I don't have anything to do, putting out the net again, regretting it, and then just going like that. So um, teaching's been good to lighten that load, for sure. So yeah. what was your first job in the industry for um, gaming? That, that editing contract, yeah, that editing contract well, with Team Man Games. So, that what was were, cool. so what were you uh, editing? Um, Temple of the Spider God, it's called, and it's um, by Jonathan Green. It's a game book adventure by Team Man Games, and it's... Um, 
<laughs> I used the word mandibles like 80 times. I was like, <laughs> we need another word for mandibles because it's got like spiders and stuff in it. And there is no other word for mandibles. Like that's all we've got. Like it's just, it's just that and nothing face else. Face pinchers? Yeah, face pinchers. Like, that another yeah, one that might face work? Face pincher. Yeah, I, I agonized over that. I was like, we're saying mandibles so much. Uh, but it turns out it's okay. Um, <laughs> So that was really fun. I worked on that for a, you know, a couple of months trying to logic edit as well as the copy and the grammar. So that was fun because that was the first time I kind of went, oh yeah, you can get stuck in a loop and how do we prevent that from happening? And, and it's a huge, huge book. It's like 100 and, 180 words or so. So it's like, it's massive. Um, oh, sorry, 180,000 words. 180,000. Uh, <laughs> 180 words is not big. Um, it took me months. <laughs> um, <laughs> Order magnitude. Order magnitude yeah. there. So, um, yeah, that was, that was really fun to work on that. And then from there, I got some other contract jobs with, like I was saying before, there's no AAA sort of left in Australia. So there's a lot of little contracts that you do to survive. And if anyone here is in a position to uh, offer remote work, please offer it to an Australian because we really, really need that AAA experience. Um, it's really hard to get it. All jobs that are here require it in some way, five years worth, five titles, you know, and we're all going, we're really good and there's a high, high caliber of work in Australia, but we just can't get that AAA experience. And we have a lot of government funding um, in Melbourne in particular that help us make games. And if you've got a AAA title or a couple of AAA things under your belt, you'll get whatever fund you apply for. Mm. Like it makes a massive, massive difference to us to get just like one contract of you know, remote work. It makes a huge difference. So if some people here who have AAA experience yeah. decide to go to uh, Melbourne. Oh God, you get every job and all the money you want. <laughs> <laughs> Pro tips. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, so it, it does make a big difference. And think about it too, like if you're trying to tell your boss that remote work is possible, you can set a task at 5 p.m. and it's there waiting for you at 9 a.m. And you've, you know, you've, you've, you've told us what to do, we do it, we wake up, we're done. You know, that's a bit of a lie. It's not exactly that clean. It's like, <laughs> it's like what, it's 8 a.m. now over there? So, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't quite be that. But you can definitely set a task and have it finished by the time, you know, you wake up. And that's, that's cool, especially in crunch time. Yes. Don't you crunch, make us crunch. We'll crunch together and halve the time. We don't have to sleep. We that's, just go shoom, straight through. That's nice. You yeah. guys can pick up the slack while, exactly. while the rest of us try to sleep. Yeah, and you can sleep. We can get AAA experience on our resumes and everyone's happy. Sounds like a win-win. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Why not? So what about like um, resources in Australia for LGBTQIA? Is there anything there for gaming? There, or? Yeah, there's a couple things around. There's nothing like this yet. Yet, yet. We'll plot something. Uh, I run Widget, which is for women and non-binary game developers. Um, that's a Facebook hub at the moment, but we're turning it into an arts organization. Um, so we're going to get some, get some funding going, which would be good. Um, and there's, what else is there? There's, there's a gamer, G-A-Y-M-E-R. There's a gamer group in most major cities in, um, in Australia. There's, um, it's mostly grassroots stuff of people just saying there's nothing here we'll make something we don't have anything really supported by you know big names we've got the women in games awards from xbox xbox is doing amazing work sony needs to really pick up their game because xbox is doing all the all the outreach here um sorry if there's any sony people in the room you can fix that by you know giving us <laughs> and we can do that together yeah. Yeah. so like, like <laughs> yeah. let's talk yeah let's all just pull it all together and do some cool stuff definitely um so yeah, there's a couple of grassroots support organizations, but nothing really massive well, yet. Well, so Australia mm. just passed the, uh, you all just recently made uh, gay marriage legal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So have you seen changes uh, or troubles that have come from that? Well, before the, because it was a postal survey, what? which means it was like, we don't have leaders in our country. We just have people who go, does everyone want this? Okay, okay. We'll ask the people instead of doing our job. Anyway, um, so <laughs> you could probably relate to that, except without the asking the people part. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was really hard leading up to it because there was a lot of homophobia, uh, transphobia, just a lot of really horrible... It brought the debate up when the debate wasn't needing to be up, you know what I mean? Like, right. we had to go all the way back in there again. I think it had a death toll. I don't have any concrete evidence on that, but I definitely know that our entire community was really fatigued by it, and it was really exhausting. Um, on the actual day, we were all, you know, in massive rallies in our, in our 
cities, and they said that it was 66% yes. So we all went, oh, thank okay, God, good. And then, you know, we all had massive parties for like a week, and then um, <laughs> we did not sleep. Uh, and, and so then the six months after that or so, we started getting the first marriages coming in, and that, that was really, really special to see. And the people who were pushing back against it, I think, saw the pink dollar, the value of the pink dollar, as they say, uh, and kind of went, okay, maybe it's not so bad after all, because we'll all make money out of this and it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> which is not the best attitude to have, but, um, you know, it's, it's calmed down a little bit now. I think there'll always be a little scar in my heart from that time, that time that, that our government didn't stand up and just do what was a no-brainer, and that we had to go through that pain, and that we had to have... You know, we were abused in the streets, and, and like I said, I wasn't a lot because I'm straight passing in a way. Um, but a lot of my friends were, you know, egged and yelled at and, you know, told to go home. Uh, where do you go? <laughs> yeah, where's, back to the caves, I guess. I don't know. Like, San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to San Francisco. Even though they're from Australia. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, yeah, I think there'll always be that little, that little upsetness and that little memory. Um, just to add to the pile, I guess, of, you know, the way that queers have been treated over the years. And it was really hard. The, the bit that really upset me was um, there was some op-ed somewhere that said, where are all the elder gay people? Why are they all young? Why are all the elder ones not coming out and getting to the streets and convincing the elders? And we're like, they're all dead. <laughs> like, do you remember AIDS? Like, fuck you. Like, that's a big, big scar in all of our hearts like you can't be turning around and blaming us for them not being there like if they could be they would, they would be. Like, yeah. that that was the most upsetting part about that whole that whole thing in Australia's history yeah. so you mentioned that you you teach now yeah right yeah so what do you teach I teach writing for video games um, at, at that's the subject name at RMIT and at the VCA it's like games writing for the screenwriters, so. So what's VCA? Yeah. Sorry, I'm. Uh, the Victorian College of the Arts. It's part of the University of Melbourne. So that's yeah, it's one of the biggest unis in in Melbourne, in Victoria, and um, it's yeah, it's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. So is there any uh, queer narratives that uh, are loads, topics? Loads, loads, and I love it. Um, <laughs> we've got some of the best queer students ever. Uh, in my RMIT cohort, we've got 46% women, which is a national. Top, like we, we have the best gender equity and game development program in the in the country. Yay! Yes, <laughs> um, and I think that's got a lot to do with we've got so many women on staff, uh, especially in higher up positions. All the all the all the bosses are women in that in that department. Um, and yeah, it's amazing. That, that just blows my mind. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. And uh, and it sort of trickles trickles down. It's the only thing that trickles down. Um, <laughs> and uh, it, it's it's really amazing to see. When they come up with their first twine games, they once the students get a whiff that I'm queer, some of them are like, oh, ah, ah, Family. Like, like I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm so glad I'm in your class. I love your class. And then they make like super, super gay games at the end of it, and they're like, I knew it'd be okay because I'm with you. Like we've had um, a gay dating simulator that um, was was ended up being like a a murder mystery, but no one was murdered. It, it, yeah, anyway, it was amazing. Um, and we've had a lot of games about consent, which mm. I feel are really, really interesting. Yes. Because um, twine and making choices and stuff does lend itself really easily to, like, what do you do in this situation? A, B, or C, you know? So there's been a lot of games about consent, one with, like, this amazing sex worker succubus who was, like... I was like, this game's cool. <laughs> like, was just, yeah, complete with um, illustrations and everything. And so, Wild. yeah, I love teaching because I feel like... As a young queer game developer, if I went to school to learn game development and I had that teacher, I'd be like, oh, you know, it counteracts all of, not all of it, but it counteracts a lot of, a lot of the hate that you get online or the hate that you get, you know, from being a minority in a, in a group of people. Mm -hmm. Feel like, not nah, my teacher is going to kick your ass if she hears that. Like, you know, like, yeah. there's, a, there's a comfort to that. Yeah. There's, so Gordon kind of touched on something interesting um, about... Uh, difference between gay and homosexual, and homosexual yeah. is who you sleep with, it's what you do, yeah. and then gay is your identity, yeah. and who you are, and so like, I, uh, sometimes it seems like people who write for games uh, tend to think, oh, LGBTQIA, well, that's who you have sex with, Yeah, yeah. and uh, they, they seem to have a hard time understanding that there is a 
there's something additional to that. Yeah. And it's just who you are yeah. as well, and that gets criticized. Yeah. But there's also a whole different area to expand, within, to explore within the identity. Yeah. So, uh, like, when it comes to game narratives, and uh, do you feel like there's room to improve there? Or do you Absolutely. feel like, uh, like they kind of cover it, and this game is really good about that? Or, <laughs> like, what are your thoughts on that, as, um, as far as separating who you sleep with with who you are? Yeah, I, I, that actually made me feel really good. I got, like, a, I've got a sort of bisexual support group um, back home called Bye Bye Haters. <laughs> Bye bye haters. Bye bye haters, and it's um, yeah. It's, so it's specifically for for bi and pan people who are sick of being told how gay they are by other people, and and I, it did make me. It was it was kind of like one of those switch moments where I went ah, oh. and it was yeah. I'm bi, and my sexuality is dictated by how I feel and and what I you know, not who I feel it about, like but how I feel, and so. It was definitely a, a light bulb moment for me, and I, I found that really interesting when Gordon brought it up too. Um, I don't, yeah, that's why I don't think bisexuals are binary so much. Like, I don't think it is about like I like two genders. Like, I, I feel like it's bi just means I'm open to you know a whole bunch. Um, I know that that's not something that everyone agrees with, and that's okay. There's room for everyone. And some people um, bring up pansexual. Yeah, and some up yeah pan and, and everything, but. Like Gordon was saying, the history with bisexual is a bit stronger than it is with pan, so it's sometimes easier in a mainstream context to say bi, because they kind of go, oh yeah, I kind of get that. You like everything, right? It's like, mm, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, not everyone and everything, but just certain things, yeah. Um, so, sorry, uh, as an example to hold up of who's doing it well, God, I wish, there was, I wish that was easier to do. It needs to be easier to do. Um, I can't. So a challenge to the anything. industry, huh? It's a real challenge. I, I want multi-dimensional characters who are not defined by their sexuality. That doesn't mean their sexuality can't be important to them, um, but it's not a defining factor about who you are. I'm I'm way more interesting than who I have sex <laughs> with. Like that's probably like what this is doing is like the least interesting thing about me. Like you know what I mean? Like this, this. it's yeah. This is where it's at, and this is where it's at. And you know what these are doing, and what I'm actually doing is, you know, yeah, it's important. But it's um, I'm not just this weird amorphous blob that likes to have sex with people. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'd like to see way, way, way more bisexual representation because I think everyone knows the L, everyone knows the the G. We're starting to understand the T a bit more. Thank God, it took long enough. <laughs> it's still taking a long time. Still taking a long time. Um, but the B, I think everyone just kind of goes, okay, all right, you get to be both. Lucky you. You know, there's a bit of sometimes tension there because we do, we can be in, you know, heterosexual presenting relationships. But I'm a good person. Don't confuse me with a heterosexual. Like. I'm a good person. Um, <laughs> there are plenty of heterosexual people yeah, that are also sorry. a good person. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I, feel, I feel like we've got a long way to go with bisexual representation in particular. Um, and if you're working on something, I'd really love to help you out and you know, give a proofread or anything, um, help you out and for freezies, because that's what we do in Australia. We all just help each other out and you need to do that more. It's, it's, it's the only way to go forward. That's solidarity in what we believe and also in our work. You, gotta, you can't be like, right on, everyone's cool, and then keep your stuff all to yourself. Mm -hmm. Like, that's greedy. You've got you know, you to share. You've got to collaborate. You've got to help. You've got to put stuff back. If you believe in helping the queer community, then go and find a queer developer and help them. Like, actually help them with their work, not just be like, you're right on and you're doing great stuff. Like, pick it up with them. Like, nut stuff out. Ask them, what's that about? What's this about? What's that? Prove that that's good. Like, really pick at it, because that's the only way it's going to get better. So that's a recommendation that you have yeah. for, for the folks here? Absolutely. Is, is so, you, so you're basically like, hey, jump out there. 
yeah. look at people's work and challenge it challenge in, it. in a creative way, a construct yeah. constructive way. Absolutely, don't be a dick, but like be nice about it and be and ask first. <laughs> don't be all like and start ripping it apart. Can you give us a a, a situation where you did that to someone's work? Yep. And you had to uh, pick it apart. Um, and, and you had to give an education about something because they didn't yeah. understand. Yeah, and, yeah. And can you tell us about an experience where you had that? So in a student context, that's cheating, I know, talking about being in, being in a teaching student context. I mean, you're a teacher, so it works. teachers yeah. had to teach teachers. Yeah, exactly. Um, I did have someone write about, like, uh, in their game they had... It, it was a really solid game. It worked really well, but they said, like, both genders at some point, and I was like all genders and they're like I don't understand there's only two I was like oh honey <laughs> oh. okay sit down <laughs> Go, this is gonna take a while put the kettle on I got some stuff to talk to you about and just like little things like that pop up all the time as a teacher but in terms of actually picking up someone's entire body of work and really nutting through there was a, a young queer um, woman who came into my class already with 80,000 words of a twine game like a, a novel basically and she was like can you kill this and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I need you to, like, send it home limping to me with, like, red ink coming out everywhere. Wow. And I was like, okay. So I edited the whole thing, went through. It was like, why is this? Why is that? What's this for? Like, really, really aggressive because she asked for aggressive. And she got it back and she, you know, went like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm garbage. I'm like, you're not garbage. You're going to be amazing. And she's come out now. She's almost finished the redraft. And it's, it's not a totally different book, but it's a better, a better book for sure. And she's like eternally thankful and really sweet about it. Um, but we'll see whether it ends up, I've told her to keep the old version and then have the new version and maybe she'll put them on a blog and be like, here's before I had someone kill it and here's after, which is just editing. But it's an editing job is only so good as its editor. Mm -hmm. And I think if you want, you know, to have a queer audience for your game or something, have a queer editor, like, or a sensitivity reader or someone, you know, who's sort of trained in doing that. Um, and then it'll be, it'll be better, it'll be easier, yeah. Yep. So I think that's probably the, that's the, been the most exciting one where I've actually sat down and been given permission to be brutal and to almost treat them like an enemy in a way, <laughs> like being like, this is garbage and this, you don't say garbage on the notes, but. You, you say know, it as you write it? Yeah, you're writing like, what does this mean? Go more into that, mm -hmm. less of this, garbage. more of that, you know, garbage, <laughs> garbage, garbage, garbage. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a work in progress. There's a lot of like justify this, you know, back up that challenge. Yeah. So that's, that's how we get better. It's all great to sit around and like pat each other on the back and say how great we are. Yeah, but it and that has better. a place. But yeah, we don't advance. Yeah. We've got to, you know, we've got to get better. So okay, so we've got yeah. uh, one minute left. Oh god. Uh, so Sorry. let's let's go ahead and um, <laughs> like uh, we'll go ahead and bring it to a close. Yeah. What's your social media? How can people follow you oh. so they can see this side by side? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Lena Van D. So L E E N A V A N D. Um, I'm on Facebook, Lena Van Deventa. If you would like to add me. Um, if you want to be in the widget group, that's for women and non-binary folk only, unfortunately. We're hoping to set up like a, a brother group for, um, okay. for everyone else. A brotherhood <laughs> chapter. <laughs> yeah, another chapter. So we just need to get that funding to get that done. So yeah, but add me and I look forward to chatting with you about stuff. All right, well, thank yeah. you. Appreciate thank you so much for having me. Here. Thank you.